So you decide you want to start exercising to change your health. Great, that is awesome. And you decide you want to go walking. Well, how far should you walk? How fast should you be walking? How often should you do it? We're going to be answering those questions in this video. In order to discuss how we should be performing cardiovascular exercise, we need to kind of lay a groundwork by using what we call the FIT principle. The FIT principle is basically an acronym that allows us to be able to define how much we should be doing of things and how intense and that type of thing. So the FIT principle, F stands for frequency, I stands for intensity, T stands for time, and then the last T stands for type. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through each of these um, parts of the acronym and discussing how these relate to cardiovascular activity. So let's start with the F. So F stands for frequency, which basically means how often we should be doing something in order for it to be beneficial to us. And the research shows that we should be doing anywhere from about three to five times a week um, cardiovascular activity. If you do less than three times a week, then the benefits are kind of not, not as much as they should be. And if you're doing more than five times a week, well, then we're at actually a, a greater risk of injury, especially if you're doing um, one type of exercise, say, for example, walking or jogging or cycling. If you're doing some, just one type of exercise more than five times a week, then we're at an increased risk of activity. That doesn't mean we can't do it, but that means that if you're going to want to do something more than five times a week of one specific exercise, then you're going to want to try to slowly build up your ability to do that. Most beginners are going to start somewhere around three times a week and kind of gradually progress from there. So I stands for intensity, which is how hard we should be doing something. And the easiest way to be able to break down intensity is by um, judging how we feel when we're doing an activity. And there's a scale that's been developed called the Borg scale, which starts at the number 6 and progresses all the way to 20. 20 being an all-out maximum effort. If you were to go sprint for as long as you can, as hard as you can, that would be a 20. Whereas 6 is just sitting on your bottom at home, watching TV on the couch, where you're doing absolutely nothing. And all exercise can be characterized between these two numbers. Um, According to the research, if you're wanting to get health benefits from cardiovascular activity, we should be doing what's called moderate training. Sometimes vigorous training, depending on what your goals and aspirations are. But for most people, you can be, live in that moderate zone. And moderate training, typically on this scale, is between 12 and 14. Now, for those of you that, you know, don't really, you haven't really exercised a whole lot lately, you're not entirely too sure how hard something really feels, um, it's been shown it's okay for you to work in that 10 to 12 range, so a little bit lower than that 12 to 14. You can operate there for a little while as you kind of get used to the exercise and you feel what's going on, but you definitely want to try to progress up to that 12 to 14 range. Another way to go about it is what we call the talk test. So whenever we're exercising, you should notice that you're starting to breathe a little heavier, um, and it's taking you a little bit more effort for you to breathe. Now, the reason we call it a talk test is because if you're truly in the moderate zone, you should still be able to talk. So, you know, whenever I go out for a jog with my friends, I'm jogging with them, but I should be able to carry a conversation. So if I'm able to carry a conversation while I'm running, then I know that I'm in that moderate range. Whenever I start increasing my pace to where um, I can no longer talk with somebody really well, I'm now starting getting into more of those hard, um, you know, harder zones uh, more vigorous zones, uh, which is okay to operate in depending on what your goals are. Uh, but for most people, health, if, you were, if health is your goal, you can operate in that moderate zone. You should still be able to talk, but you should notice that your breathing is elevated slightly. The first T stands for time. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the amount of time per week we should be spending um, working on cardiovascular activity. And it's been recommended you get at least a minimum of 150 minutes per week of moderate activity, or you can have 75 minutes of vigorous activity. And so what most people will do is they will break this down to um, three to five times a week, like we talked about with the frequency, and doing anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes every time you go out and exercise. And so a lot of people will start, you know, doing 30 minutes, maybe three days a week. So you're operating at 90 minutes a week if we do that, which is below your 150 minute range, but with the goal of progressing and getting yourself up to that 150 
a minute per range successfully. Now it should be noted that the 150 minutes a week is kind of on the lower scale of, of getting the benefits from exercise or from cardiovascular exercise. So it's actually been recommended you get closer to 300 minutes. Um, and so a lot of people will break that down to five days a week going for 60 minutes for five days a week and that will get you your 300 minutes a week um, of moderate based activity. So it should also be noted that if you are trying to lose weight, there was a research article that showed that if you are um, trying to really benefit from losing weight, you should be really be exercising about 60 to 90 minutes per session. Now, if you're beginning exercise and you're new to exercise, you probably shouldn't start off with that much activity all at once. Start with something lower then gradually progress upwards to that range. But if you're really trying to maximize weight loss, it's good to work in that range of 60 to 90 minutes. And the other T that we're going to talk about stands for type. And type is basically um, the exercise that we are choosing or the modality that we are choosing in order to uh, perform our cardiovascular activity. So for example, walking, jogging, hiking, rowing, cycling, dancing, you name it. There are lots of different types of cardiovascular activities and they give some recommendations on what types of uh, cardiovascular activities are typically better and they say anything that is typically rhythmic, so something you can perform over and over and over again, so for example walking is your legs going back and forth over and over again, so something that is rhythmic and then something that uses uh, the major muscles in your body. So for example, when you're walking, you're using pretty much all the muscles in your legs for either stability or pro propelling yourself forward, and then muscles in your upper body for stability and counteracting balance. So it's a whole body exercise as we're walking. I hope you guys found this video beneficial and be looking out for future videos in regards to resistance training, flexibility, and neuromuscular control. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And you guys have a great day.